Hey, I was thinking the other day, I want to improve in game design, coding, as well as every other thing on the side. Because basically, I made some games in Unity for like two months, and then I stopped for a year. But I'm back, baby! With our attention spans now shorter than a goldfish on Espresso, I wanted to relearn Unity quick. And then I came across this. It was called Game A Week, and it was 12 projects to span over 12 weeks. I thought to myself, this is a perfect way to experiment with different styles, as well as different topics and concepts. And as I've mentioned before in past videos, I learned to edit doing similar things, where I would do rapid fire videos over and over and over. And you know, eventually you would mix and match, and everything would come together into a beautiful blend of what I hope is a good video. So this Game of Week thing was almost just a bunch of game jams in rapid succession. The first project was 10 seconds or less. So instantly, I thought of micro games. Just a bunch of micro games together, all lasting 10 seconds or less. But I wanted it to feel a bit more unique, and I thought, how about co-op? One person on keyboard, one person on mouse? This would mean they both have completely different controllers and control schemes, making you feel like they're doing different things but working together. But you know, some of you are lonely little fellas, so you can still play alone. <laughs> I'm not talking about myself. To begin, I made a couple of games. This one was completely original. In concept, nothing was taken from from any other thing that I was watching. Uh, one person charges and the other person spins the mouse. It gets bigger and then they click to shoot. And currently I didn't have a way to show the control schemes so you got text on screen baby. We're innovating! Then I added some sound effects and music with my voice. Yes, I'm a voice actor. <laughs> Is that voice acting? I don't, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know or have any way to record music and making sound effects just sounded fun in my mind and I really liked the style and I thought it would work really well for all of them. And I made this one where one person runs and the other person shields. The interesting thing about making games like this though, I understood how important it is to break up all your scripts into single mechanics and just make it in a way that you can reuse it whenever you want. I've always known this is something that people do but sometimes they get lost in the source and you make a script that just gets bigger and bigger and then uh... but this did teach me and it's huge for me like my Rather than having text on the screen that says what you have to do, I thought I'd make eight control schemes. Four for mouse, four for keyboard. So it wouldn't get too overwhelming for the player. And I named them silly things so they had a bit more personality. Having this as a basis, I made a few more micro games. One being a move and shoot, but the movement is like thrusters in space. So if you let go, you still continue for a bit. And this one is about moving left and right and dragging boxes out of the way. And while testing this game, I found pushing the player with the box was really fun, but I didn't expect everyone who tested it to also have the same reaction is me. Drop it on me. I <laughs> also simplified the charging game a bit too, so we feel a bit more cooperative and not just one person do one thing and one person do something else. So one person charges and the other person has to block all the shots. <laughs> Beat him! <laughs> I needed a hub or something to tie all the games together and not just flashbang one after the other like some terrible PowerPoint presentation. So I made a manager that would spawn in each level and each level is a prefab, objects that are stuck together. I put them in a list so they don't repeat until the whole cycle is done. And then I made this cute animation, the transition from one mini game to the next. I did this not in the way that you might think. I did this using Premiere Pro. I know how to edit and I think I'm a better editor than an animator. So I drew these few assets, I edited them into a sequence adding some squash and stretch, some masking, but I needed this to transition into the game. So I ended up rendering the sequence as a bunch of PNGs with alphas so I could zoom into the game at the end. So now between every one, a win animation plays if you win the previous one or a lose animation plays if you lost the last one. And in the same way as my animations before, I added controls so the player knew exactly what to expect before the timer. So I set up a little metadata thing for each prefab so when the game gets selected, it looks at it, says, okay, this is these two controls, let's show these on screen. And because the minigames are only 10 seconds long, I thought this would be a good way to get all the information up front so they only have to concentrate on what the goal is. I also tried to do some game design. <gasps> oh my god! So on top of these two panels, there are two colors, and these match the controllable things in the micro game. So anything yellow will be controlled by the keyboard, anything blue will be controlled by the mouse. Alright? Alright, smart? No? Okay. And I doubled down on this concept by drawing a custom mouse cursor, which is also blue. Do 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 do. Bop, bop, bop. so good.
Overnight, I couldn't stop thinking about games, and I ended up writing 50 ideas for games down on my phone. My goal, although I have 50 ideas, was to get two done a day, because I would have to do the animation, the mechanics, everything. So the new micro games I made, one was a bug. You had to use the sun's ray to make a laser and burn. Wow, that sounds more messed up when I say it out loud. And the bug only shows in the magnifying glass. We learn about masking today, baby. Why do I keep saying that? And my favorite, the little foosball or table football game, where you spin the mouse wheel to spin the little guy and then WS to move up and down. Two more seconds. No! <laughs> Yes! Now, at this point, I realized that replayability seems like something important in micro games. A good way for replayability is random. So I added five spawn points, a random number of guys will spawn, meaning it's not the same every time. And then I added this little keeper that goes up and down. Look at how cute he is. But I think this would be a fun little game on its own. I knew I wanted a boss for this game, so I started making the boss at the end of this day, but I gave up and made this tree kind game instead. But I did go back. But I didn't finish it. But I did plan it and draw all the weapons and the attacks and the player. So we're closer. The boss was ignored for now. I made a dancer micro game with spinning on the disco ball. And then W and S to make him dance with little Doritos to show how many times you have to do this. And then my second favorite game I ever made, the vacuum mini game. Where using the scroll would send you forward and backwards. So scrolling forward would mean that you constantly go forward. And then scrolling backwards would mean you constantly come backwards. And then A and D to twist left and right. So it's just like a little driving thing. It was really fun. Some loved it. I love this one. Some hated it with a burning passion. What the fuck? I did finally go back to the boss. I ended up making the boss attack so they flashed, which meant the keyboard had to dodge, and then clicking would attack. But they can't be done at the same time, so now you have to communicate with your friend. Gross, right? I'm not going to talk about how long this health bar took me to make. Just, no. I mean, I've done it before, but I just couldn't. I don't know what happened. Also, I removed the timer for this, and then just made it so if the boss lost all its HP, you won. If you lost all your HP, you would lose. And this would not fly in that course that I initially set out to do, but I'm not in that course, so suck it! Although I felt a change of pace would be super nice. After being rapid fire hit with micro games, you would have that time to chill, and then do the epic moment of killing the boss. <laughs> Look, I get this is longer than a week, I understand that 8 is more than 7, but I thought it was important to finish it, and not just leave it half finished. So I made all the sound effects, the music for all the games, here are some music and sound highlights that I have. Hi. I don't know if you could tell, but this was done with my mouth. Yeah, I had to hold a vacuum sound for 14 seconds. Yes, my lung exploded. But it's kind of funny that you could hear my voice crack if you leave the micro game running the whole time. But I also bullied my other half into playing the game with me so I could test it, and she liked it. Or I, I think that's what she said. Is that what you said? No. Yeah, she loved it. I also made this maze mini game with switches, and there was three maps that would randomly be selected. Also, for some reason, this guy spins after you win, and I don't know why, but it's a feature, and it's funny. I added a pause menu, main menu, but real talk, this is the best main menu music I've ever heard. I made a whole game with mechanics, sound effects, music, art, animation, and everything else. Also, I might continue working on this? My game is free on H.io if you want to try it and tell me what you think. I'd love to know. See you in the next one. Bye!